44 minutes after the hour, America. Larry O'Connor in for Hugh Hewitt, joined by the vacationing John And Campbell. Larry, we're going to pretend just like you're Hugh, and so, I, so I'm going to talk. I, I can see, and you know, I I'm love so, the go Excuse me, but I was just doing my intro. I here, love the go And I mean, this is, I, I am a trained I hear this song. You can't just jump I in. I hear this song coming on, and I'm yes. thinking, the go Go's. that's great. I love the go Go's. And then, and then, and then it's vacation, well, so that's I why, get that's it. Exactly. Yes, see, I know. You're here so it was intended to be an insult. You're certainly not here for work, but it didn't work out to be an insult because I really, because because I I mean you know, the girl band the Go Go's they're cool. Yeah, well they're not and as cool as the Bangles though. Don't get me started. There. Well, I mean, the, bangles the Bangles were really cool. Bangles, were, I think the Go Go's have gone back together and they're touring again with Belinda Carlisle. Really? Yeah, yes. with with wow. Belinda Carlisle. She exciting. she came back and they're. Uh, I'll make sure I. They're, uh, they're touring. The bangles again. are still around too. Make sure I yeah. grab that ticket. You may uh, want to sign up. Yeah, John Campbell. Was, last night we had a debate. It was the twenty fifth debate. In the was year. it the twenty fifth? <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> if you'd said it was the hundred and fifth, I think I would have believed. Now I think this has been a good process because the candidates are getting better and we do i mean let's face it they're gonna they better be good at debating I mean, if they I, go up against obama yeah and you know that's one thing um i was we were talking about i was talking about this with somebody earlier today oh you guys are beating up on each other and i said you know it it really does sharpen the 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 tool uh As of, they of say. whoever whoever sh- sharpen the knife <laughs> of whoever it's a family show com- here comes out here yeah but it's uh um it it uh they will be uh, our nominee will be battle tested and will be ready for obama and obama's uh, uh, he'll, I bet he gets rocked a few times early on in the campaign because he's not had to have a battle for a while. So. Well, you speak about battle tested, and there were some moments that were uh, that were full of battling last night. Let's. Uh, I, I want to play you. Th- this is a fascinating part, and and uh, uh, General Isimo, you do have to cue this up. This is when uh, New King Rich and Romney they went, they went back and forth over the owning of bank stocks. Uh, and and foreclosures and things like this. And there was a moment, you know, uh, obviously Romney has been uh, pointing out to the voters that Newt Gingrich earned, his company earned $1.5 million right, uh, for from consulting. Freddie Mac. Yep. Consulting. Mm-hmm. He, was con- he was just giving them advice, just consulting and teaching them about history, right? Uh, well, yeah, and, and, all right. I, well, I want you I, to hear. I was going to give you another little inside thing because there's well, been all this talk. Was he consulting or was he lobbying? And I was. Well, let's hear. No, I think I know where you're going. And, and, and actually, uh, uh, Governor Romney brought that. But let's start with Newt, the way Newt went after uh, Mitt. And after Monday night, because frankly, I'd had about enough of this. We discovered to our shock, Governor Romney owns uh, shares of both Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Governor Romney made a million dollars off of selling some of that. Governor Romney owns share and has an investment in Goldman Sachs, which is today foreclosing on Floridians. So maybe Governor Romney, in the spirit of openness, should tell us how much money he's made off of how many households that have been foreclosed by his investments. But let's be clear about that. Oh, my God. Now, OK, now, Larry, we were talking on the break. I actually didn't watch the debate and I could have. It wasn't like I was on an airplane without TV or something like that. I could have. To be frank, I can't stand listening to Newt anymore. He's driving me nuts. He's it's it's he's uh, he grates on me more than Obama does today. He's, oh my! He is he just and that kind of thing. Barack Obama could not have said it better. That's a, this is a left wing liberal argument. That's what this guy is. That's why we cannot have him as our nominee. And I just uh, the the more I hear of this, the more uh, the the more worked up I get. I mean, I mean. It, what is he thinking? What, what is he thinking? <laughs> I thought you would enjoy that. that oh, clip. my gosh. I had not. See, that's why I didn't watch it. I know. It I'm just, sorry. Now, now my blood pressure is going up. My doctor is going to be very mad at me. Uh, I, I, um, it, this is crazy. This guy, uh, you know, one of the things we don't like about Barack Obama is his arrogance. Right? We yes, don't like oh, that. Absolutely. Okay. What about Newt? I think he wins. <laughs> I, I think he's more arrogant than, than Obama, and that's hard to do. Wow. And I really do think he is, and that's what that kind of thing shows. He doesn't care whether it's a left-wing argument or right-wing argument. He doesn't care anything. He's always right. He's, he's, he, is, he, is, he, is, um, he is one of those people, it, it seems to me, who is often wrong but never in doubt. <laughs> and and he is um, and that's an example of that. I can't believe that. Yeah, no, no, uh, Congress, <laughs> you, just, we, we talked about this during the break, and, and I, I wonder. Uh, you, you're here in Washington D.C. right now. Seventy-two sitting. Your, your colleagues in the House have endorsed Mitt Romney, and uh, a, a whopping eleven have endorsed. About half of which I think are from Georgia. <laughs> 
<laughs> could I, I, very well early be. Early on, the only endorsements he had were from George. He had like three, and they were just Georgians. So is this? Is this? Do you guys talk about? I always. It's fascinating to me that you guys are, you know, in the seat of power there, and you're. You, but I guess you guys talk about this stuff, you know, when you're offline and and sort of sharing uh, funny remarks in the cloakroom, right? I mean, it, 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 sure. Does Newt's and, performance in this campaign come up a lot. Uh, uh, yes, and you know, I've I've been a Romney guy, and the listeners to this show know know that, and I. Oh, so you're I, a rhino. And I think I, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm like in the top five most conservative people in the, in the House in just about every measure. And so, You're a rhino and, just and like so, Ann Coulter and just like Charles Krauthammer, yeah, you're a rhino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, fi- um, uh, when um, most members, I endorsed Mitt this time around, I think back in June. Uh, and most members weren't endorsing anybody. And I would talk to them, and they, they didn't want to go anywhere. Yeah, I don't know what the feel is. Chris Christie could get in. Mitch Daniels could get in. I don't you know. So that's fine. So most people stayed out. Then it looked like finally by, like, August or so that the field was set. But still people didn't want it. Oh, well, you know, Rick Perry, and there's all these various other people and so forth in the thing. I'll just stay out, and I'll just watch. And then when it started to get down to Newt and Romney, a bunch more people jumped on the Romney camp. Hmm. Because they know Newt. Given that choice. And given that choice, now I now I'm I'm ready to go. But when it was Newt and and Rick Perry, or when it was Newt and um and Herman Cain, or when it was Newt and Donald Trump, remember? Not <laughs> yes, Newt. Of I course. mean Mitt. Mitt and Rick Perry, Mitt and Donald right, Trump. Right, right, Mitt, right, sure. Mitt and all that. Um they they they, they were comfortable staying out, but, right. they, but they're not comfortable staying N- out now. Knowing that you are a Romney backer, I feel like I need to purge you of this uh, of what of the taste I've left in your mouth. Oh. So uh, there there was <laughs> now now later on in this exchange, Mitt Romney comes back with a, a, a what I can only describe as a defense of wealth. Uh, which is and it's about time we had somebody defending the idea of being wealthy uh, in this country. I want you to hear this, uh, Congressman Campbell. Let's respond. <laughs> First of all, my investments are not made by me. My investments for the last ten years have been in a blind trust managed by a trustee. Secondly. The investments that they've made, we've learned about this as we made our financial disclosure, have been in mutual funds and bonds. I don't own stock in either Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. There are bonds that the investor has held through uh, mutual funds. And, Mr. Speaker, I know that sounds like an enormous revelation, but have you checked your own investments? You also have investments through mutual funds that also invest in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. All right. It was an ugly moment. He did defend wealth, too. We'll do that when we come back, Congressman Campbell. I'm Larry O'Connor, in for Hugh Hewitt. John Campbell stays with us through one more segment. Go nowhere, America. We'll be right back.